Let's dive into the nitty gritty. Uh, as always, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so make sure you go watch it unless you hate independent films that are slow and are similar to Coldplay. Uh, some might say they insist film on versions <laughs> of Coldplay, <laughs> of as some people say. <laughs> but The Weatherman was released October 28th, 2005, um, with a budget of $22 million. Uh, only made 19 million back at the box office. So this is seven for seven, I believe. We've done seven movies, right? Like yeah, our, this is our seven. So seven straight box office bombs, which um, I've started tracking it. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to the trackers, but uh, yeah, seven straight bombs. Uh, That's crazy. This is directed, of course, by Gore Verbinski, who is uh, best known for directing the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Um, among other things, he's, uh, he's got a lot, of, a lot of different credits to his name. Mm -hmm. Rango, of course, uh, oh, yeah, he did that right. terrible Lone Ranger movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Ring, the, the uh, American remake of the Japanese version of The Ring. Oh, he did, that's uh, right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, so he's, he's no stranger to, uh, to big budget movies, but this is actually, we'll get into it, but this is the lowest budget movie he's ever done, which 22 million is a, not a small budget. Um, no, but, it's not. But, I'm yeah. assuming a large chunk of that went to Nicolas Cage and, I'm sure. and Michael Caine. <laughs> Michael Caine, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Runtime's 102 minutes, so it wasn't quite the slog as uh, the last episode of Bringing Out the Dead. <laughs> um, this was written by uh, Steve Conrad, <clears throat> who actually said that he, he got the idea for the movie uh, from an incident that happened when he was a kid. He and his brothers were in the car and they had, uh, I think he said Arby's or something, and uh, they saw the weatherman doing a remote on the street and they decided to chuck a soda at him and it just triggered a, a, a thought in his head of like, if that was like the lead anchor man, would we have had that instinct to chuck soda at this poor guy? Like, what, what is it about the weatherman that just Holy doesn't shit. elicit any respect. And that's where the whole idea of this movie came from. Um, Steve Conrad also wrote one of my favorite movies, uh, uh, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, the remake, the uh, oh, Ben yeah. Stiller remake that nobody seems to like but me. But I, I really love like that movie. movie. Really? Yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought they did a really good job with it. I wasn't I, expecting I, to like it, but yeah. it, I found it very charming. Yeah, uh, same, same Nigel with this said movie. It sounded like a, or it's, Nigel said it was like a Nickelback, uh, like a Nickelback <laughs> song. <laughs> Enjoyable at times, but you felt disgusting when you finished. I haven't <laughs> seen it, so I don't know. But <laughs> please don't watch it. Please don't. <laughs> you, no, but yeah, I, just I, say, I, I will good. say, though, this just does seem like the script that a teenager would come up with. <clears throat> uh, he, he wasn't a teenager when he wrote it. <laughs> Whatever. The, the premise just <laughs> seemed like something a teenager would come up with. Bastard. <laughs> this, will, this is going to be our most divided film to date so far. Uh, yeah, we'll get into it, but uh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's just say we all had very different opinions of, uh, <laughs> of this film. <clears throat> the uh, music, of course, was done by the legendary Hans Zimmer, because, of course, if you have Hans Zimmer on your Pirates of the Caribbean movies, you can be like, hey, Hans, <laughs> come over and score this movie yeah. about a weatherman. <laughs> there goes another five million of the budget. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a Hans very Zimmer. weird <laughs> very 2005 weird Hans Zimmer was um, not as prolific and huge as he is now, but, yeah, he probably got a pretty good chunk of change. Yeah, yeah I just it. looked it up. So his net worth is actually more than Gore Verbinski's right now. Oh, I believe it, dude. <laughs> that makes sense. About it. Yeah, <laughs> two hundred million dollars. Gore Verbinski's one hundred and thirty. <laughs> yeah, dude. After this, he went right into like Batman. <laughs> he continued yeah. the Pirates movies. Man, of Steel. Yeah. Like he, I mean, he just hit a stride after after two thousand five. Yeah, he dumped uh, Gore Verbinski for uh, Christopher, Tr Christopher, uh, Christopher Christopher Nolan. Nolan. Yeah. Christopher Nolan. Yeah. <clears throat> you make horrible uh, movies that are like Coldplay. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, there, I'm just going to imagine he sounds like uh, Werner Herzog. Be he funny. does kind of sound like Werner Herzog, yeah. <laughs> does he? <laughs> Not quite as, as uh, guttural and evil sounding. But. Awesome. Werner Herzog sounds the way that I picture the bad guy from Ghostbusters 2 the way he should oh. sound. <laughs> yes. 100% agree. 
<laughs> this was shot by uh, Feden. Uh, I don't know how the hell to say it. P H E D O N. Feden. Feden. Papa Michael. Fe- feed on Papa Michael. <laughs> Papa Michael. Uh, who uh, has some pretty crazy <laughs> all over the place credits? Uh, cool Runnings, Biodome. Um, <laughs> so then he started working with Alexander Payne, which actually makes a lot of sense because wow. this movie really felt like an Alexander <clears throat> Payne movie. Um, yeah. Alexander Payne for uh, the one person here who never watches those types of movies and hates those movies for no good reason. <laughs> um, he did About Schmidt. Uh, he did um, Sideways, uh, which mm-hmm. is a, such a freaking great movie. <clears throat> the Descendants, which is another great movie. Nebraska, which he was actually nominated for uh, Best Cinematography for. Mm-hmm. Even though that movie was shot black and white, which is kind of weird. But also yeah, hooked up choice. with Judd Apatow and did um, uh, This is 40. Uh, just recently did The Trial of the Chicago 7. So he's done a lot. And apparently mm-hmm. he's going to be filming Indiana Jones 5. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, he's prolific as well. Just like us, uh, the critics were were pretty torn on this movie. Um, 59% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is substantially lower than Bringing Out the Dead, (laughs) which was at like a 70 or 72, I forget. But 59%, 6.1 out of 10 out of 136 reviews, which doesn't surprise me. Based on um, the conversations that we've had back and forth, especially... Uh, Nigel uh, railing against this film in his <laughs> ways. Uh, Metacritic score is about the same, 50, or 61%, and the audience score, surprisingly, is 56%. So the audience has actually given this movie a worse rating than the critics did, which is surprising to me. Um, <laughs> I, f- I feel like maybe I watched this movie in a bubble. The first time I saw it, I was... It was, uh, you know, when it first came out, <clears throat> it was in the new release section and it looked interesting. That used to be how things worked mm-hmm. is I would go to the new release section, something new would come out and I'd be like, oh, Nick Cage. Oh, this looks interesting. And then I'd read the synopsis yeah. and then I'd rent it. But that never happens anymore. 